Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. Today let's look at the basics of using Spotlight Search on your Mac. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of more than 800 supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There you could read more about the Patreon campaign. Join us and get exclusive content and course discounts. So Spotlight Search is a convenient way to search for just about anything on your Mac in one place. You can bring it up by either clicking on the little magnifying glass icon in your menu bar or by using the keyboard shortcut Command Space. Then you type what you're searching for. Now there are a lot of advanced uses of Spotlight Search but basically it combines the searches for various types of information in one place. You can search for files, web pages, calendar events, email messages, applications, reminders, notes, and all sorts of other things. Just type what it is you're searching for. So for instance to search for a file maybe you would start typing the file name. It will show me the results. At the top I'll see some likely hits here. So it's going to suggest two files. But later on down below you'll see a section called Documents and there you'll see a third file that matches. But you also see various other things. Like for instance in the next section you can see the Safari icon and you can see several suggestions there. So these would be web searches. Now you can use the arrow keys to move up and down this list and Command and Arrow will jump by section. With any file selected I can press Return and it will open that file. I could also press Command R and it will go to the Finder location for that file. Another thing I can do is use the Tab key with something selected and it will give me a preview on the right of what the file looks like. Now it's important to note when searching for files you're not only looking at file names but also the contents of the file. So for instance I happen to know I've got this word in one file. You can see here it's going to suggest things like Safari searches but under Documents I see that file. If I hit Tab to preview it you can see the first word is that nonsense word that I created to show how Spotlight Search works. So you can find the contents of a file as well as the name of the file. However if you just want to search for a file by name you can use Name colon and then type some characters. So you can see here all I get are file results and only ones that have that in the file name. Now other common things that Spotlight Search is used for is to launch apps. So say if you want to launch an app like GarageBand you can start typing the name of the app and as soon as it comes up at the top hit it's selected so I can hit Return and it will launch that app. You can also sometimes use abbreviations for apps like GB for GarageBand will bring that up as the top hit. So a lot of people use Spotlight Search as an app launcher. Instead of the dock or launch pad they simply hit space, type a few characters, and then press Return to launch the app. In fact this is the way I launch most of my apps. Now if you want to customize Spotlight and also see what else Spotlight can search for go to System Preferences and then go to Spotlight. And then under Search Results you'll see a list of all the things included in Spotlight. If there's something you'd rather not have Spotlight show you can uncheck it. For instance if you're a graphic designer and you have a ton of fonts you may find that fonts are always showing up in your Spotlight search results and you never want to see them there. So you can uncheck fonts and now you can't search for fonts there anymore but they won't be cluttering up your results. Note that just about everything that you can do a Spotlight search for you can do a search for in the specific app. So for instance for Files I can go inside of a Finder window here and use Search at the top. This will only return file and folder results. It won't give me all the other things that Spotlight does. Plus I can search in specific locations. So here I can just search in my Documents folder or on this Mac. So if you want to just search for files you may want to do that in the Finder. As a matter of fact just like you can do Command Space for a Spotlight search you can add Option to that. Do Command Option Space and that will bring up a Finder window and have the search field selected. Notice some of the other things you can get in Spotlight search results. You can get events from the calendar and reminders from the Reminders app. You can get contacts. You can search your bookmarks and history in Safari. You can search messages in the Mail and Messages app. Music in the Music app. And even for System Preferences. So for instance if you wanted to jump right to the Trackpad System Preferences you can search for Trackpad and then you'll see System Preferences show up right here. It's the first result. You can select that and it goes right to the Trackpad Preferences. There are a few special items here. For instance Conversion and Calculator. So you can use Spotlight for math like this and you can even get pretty complex to get results of things difficult to do with the Calculator app. And for Conversions you can just type what you want and you'll see the obvious conversion there. Or to convert to a specific unit you can say In. You can get definitions as well. If you just type a word 
you'll get a definition here. You can see it appear right there. But if you use the word define and then the word then it will come up as the top hit. And notice since I see this little arrow here on the right that means I can use tab and actually open up a little preview here. So I can get the full definition without actually even opening up the dictionary app. And if you type something that's obviously a web page then it will come up with that as the top hit and you hit return and it will open up that web page in your default browser. Also in the list here you'll see Siri suggestions. And this gives you things like news, sports scores, movie information, and weather. But you can also get things like Wikipedia information. So if I search for a movie it will come up and you can see it there at the top. If I hit Tab for a preview you can see all sorts of information as well as local film times if there were any. If I do weather you'll see weather come up here and I can preview and see the weather. But I could also ask for the weather somewhere else and get the weather like that. Just type the name of the sports team you want to see sports information like game times and scores. And sometimes when you type things you'll get Siri knowledge here including Wikipedia entries. And clicking on one of those will give you a preview here directly from Wikipedia or you can jump to it in the web browser. So some extra tips. First when you bring up this window you can move it around to position it better so it's not blocking something. If you ever want to get it back in its default location click and hold the magnifying glass until it pops back. The keyboard shortcut for Spotlight menu can be customized in System Preferences, Keyboard, Shortcuts, and then Spotlight. And here you'll see the keyboard shortcut for Spotlight Search and to search directly in the Finder. That works even if the Finder isn't the frontmost app at the moment. Of course make sure these are both checked to be able to use them. So as you can see Spotlight does a lot. Different people use it in different ways. Some people just use it as an app launcher and will always search for files in the Finder. Other people will use it to search for files all the time. Some people use it to begin a web search or go to a website while other people will never use it for that. So it's a tool for you to use or not use as you like. But if you do use it it is worth going into System Preferences and customizing the results. For instance I usually turn off things like fonts and also mail messages because I'm used to searching for mail messages in the Mail app. So I can reduce a lot of clutter that way. But I know people that will turn off everything except for applications to make it easier to use as an application launcher. But it's easy to switch these settings on and off and find the ones that work best for you. If you liked this video click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.